Um, and that's at this point. This, all of this is, is, is going to change um, gradually as we progress through uh, the analysis. But at this point, this is uh, what Freer has to say. Um, liberation cannot be attained by chance or circumstance, right? And I think this is, he has a very short line in it. He doesn't address it ever again, really. Um, but it's a very important thing to understand, right? Liberation does not happen um, capriciously, right? It's not an act of serendipity. It's not that, you know, uh, all the lines sort of, uh, you know, all the stars aligned and, you know, good fortune happened. No. Liberation only results um, as a consequence of methodical, diligent planning, right? So that we cannot properly talk about libera liberation as a product of chance. So it cannot happen as a product of chance, right? Um, liberation is not something that happens just on a whim. Why? It doesn't happen on, as a product of chance because the structure, and I don't want to jump ahead too much, but the structure of the oppressor's power is so all-encompassing that there is no way that chance can destroy that structure. To attack the structure takes a recognition at least, which we don't have at this point in the discussion, but a recognition of one's own oppression. We can't even begin to talk about sort of this revolt, I mean, in the Gesetian sense, right? But we can't talk about, or this, or this transformation in the in a Freerian sense, right? We can't talk about this, this reconstruction of roles until we recognize that we are oppressed. And at this point in the discussion, and no point in this first series of videos, will the oppressed group recognize their own oppression, right? So that becomes problematic. Um, uh, liberation can only be attained through a fight for liberation, right? Um, the only way that you can attain liberation is through a fight, right? So liberation is only attained through a fight. But here's where a lot of people get free or wrong, right? This fight is not a violent fight. Anyone who tells you that Ferrer is arguing for, there are other uh, psychoanalysts and philosophers, other, others who argue that this fight really is a fight in violence, situated in violence. Ferrer does not say that at all. This fight is a fight uh, for love, right? The fight is actually an act of love, right? This fight is an act of love, and what we'll see in a, in a second is that it's in opposition to this technical idea called lovelessness. And we'll talk about lovelessness as the discussions progress. But it's a fight of love, right? And primarily, at this point, it's a fight for love of oneself, right? And one's community, right? I love who it is that I am, uh, and I recognize that there is meaning and there's significance insofar as I exist as a human being, and I am always going to fight um, to uh, dismantle, to deconstruct, to destroy all attempts to oppress me, and all attempts to caricaturize me as like, you know, some Sambo or whatever it is that you want to characterize me as, right? Um, that's not who I am. I make an affirmation and insofar as I make this affirmation, I begin this process of liberating myself from that attempt to caricaturize me, right? That attempt to put me in a little box and say, here's who these people are as such, right? Um, but that fight isn't a fight in violence, right? That fight is a fight in love. Okay. Um, so, the question then becomes, right, the, the point of this analysis then becomes, is that there is a sense in which we can speak of sort of charity and generosity, right? And he does, he does an amazing, I mean, it's absolutely amazing, his analysis of, which we're going to get into right now, his analysis of uh, um, charity and generosity, because he ties the concept of charity and generosity to and not only to, but inherent within, the idea of charity, inherent within the notion of regimented oppressor, regimented oppressed group. That the idea of charity only, according to Fourier, only functions, right? Only has life, only has dynamism within an overarching uh, discussion on subordination, of oppression, of subjugation. Without subjugation, um, subordination, oppression, you cannot properly have this discussion of charity, right? So let's see what he means uh, by that. Um, Freire talks about 
this notion of false generosity, right? False, false generosity. And he says, with respect to false generosity, only meaning, false generosity is only meaningful insofar as injustice is still perpetrated, right? This is only meaningful. False generosity is the type of generosity. It's not real generosity. But false generosity is only meaningful insofar as injustice is still being perpetrated, right? Insofar as there are injustices, insofar as you have a separation of the classes, for example, just one example, right? A separation of the classes wherein the wealth of the elite 2% um, account for more than the combined wealth of 98%. And then the elite 2% write a check for $150,000 to the people in Haiti. Well, that's false generosity, <laughs> right? Let's keep it real, right? That's basically what Ferrer is saying, right? Your $100,000 check was, was, in a sense, crumbs, right? Because um, the elite 2% occupy and maintain more than 98% of the population's income combined, right? Cutting a $100,000 check isn't, isn't really, you're not really doing much, right? The only reason that this charity has any sort of guise of actual or true charity or true generosity is because you've sort of cut the check. But in actuality, you haven't done anything, right? There, it's, it's, it's a pittance at best, right? So that false generosity only functions, this view or this interpretation or this perception of charity only functions when there is still a maintained imbalance and injustice between the oppressor and the oppressed group, right? Um, and he uses, he calls false generosity lovelessness, L-O-V-E-L-E-S-S, -E -E -S. right? He calls false generosity lovelessness. So anytime we're talking about lovelessness, we're talking about false generosity. Anytime we're talking about false generosity, we're talking about lovelessness, right? You can then see that false generosity is going to be antithetical. He doesn't say this, but you can, you can uh, draw the, you can uh, infer, you can infer this conclusion, right, that if we are talking about liberation as a fight, but that fight is an act of love, then false generosity is antithetical to liberation, right? False generosity is antithetical to liberation. And that's this very, very technical statement. It doesn't sound technical, but it is technical. Why? The question is, why is false generosity antithetical to liberation? Well, false generosity is antithetical to liberation because insofar as I've cut the check for $100,000 and I've given it to the folks in Haiti, but the actual recovery might take $100 billion, right? Plus sort of very, and this is just an example, right? Plus sort of very reinforced, uh, holistic, uh, almost uh, multi-decade multi um, recovery program, then I'm, I haven't really done anything. All I've done is I've maintained that imbalance of power. Right? So lovelessness is antithetical to this fight for liberation. Right? It makes it seem as though, it's basically what I would say, he doesn't say this at this point, but it's a pacification. Right? Um, uh, Chihuan, uh, Chino, I can never say his name, Chihuana Achebe, right? Achebe calls this the pacification. Um, and I think Achebe would agree with sort of Freire on this point, is that it's an attempt to pacify. See, I've, I've helped these people out, these poor suffering people, I've helped them out with my $100,000 check. Isn't life better? Well, no. All I've done is I've attempted to uh, quelch the liberation, right? So lovelessness is antithetical to the concept of uh, liberation in 